sleep deprivation, sleep disorders, and dreams. Psychoactive drugs are also a part of this unit. Okay, so here are the outcomes. Have a look. Okay, so the effects of sleep loss. You guys probably feel sleepy right now because actually about 28% of high school students have said, have acknowledged falling asleep in class at least once a week. Hopefully not in this class. Hopefully not. Okay, um... There's been lots of studies about sleep loss too. What happens? One of the interesting ones is they took a group of volunteers and they gave them uninterrupted chances to sleep. So they put them in bed for 14 hours. And they found on average, this group of people, on average slept for uh, an average 12 hours a night. So it was like they were making up a sleep debt that they had incurred along the way of about 25 to 30 hours. But after a few days of this, they all reverted back to about seven and a half to nine hours of sleep. So it's like they paid off their sleep debt and now they're back to normal. So we'll look at chronic sleep loss, what happens when that occurs. And also, you know, the spring and fall time changes. Look at this, spring and fall time change. Less sleep, more accidents, more sleep, fewer accidents. So in the fall, that is a dangerous day to be on the road after the time change. In the spring, it's a safe time Be or sorry, the other way around. In the spring, it's a dangerous time to be on the road because there are more accidents because one only one hour less of sleep. And in the fall, it's actually safer because there's fewer accidents because this is just one hour makes a difference. You want to feel better? What you need to do is, as psychologists suggest, they will say, for, what, for a week, just go to bed 15 minutes earlier each night and then see how that makes you feel and whether that's motivating to do that or not. And I bet you'd be quite surprised by the, the difference you have. So these are the things that happen, though, when you don't sleep. Your brain, you lose focus. You don't consolidate your memories that well. And there's a, an increased risk of depression. In fact, those that sleep less than five hours a night are at a 71% more chance than people that get sleep to develop depression. Now, depression and sleep are obviously related. Uh, people that are depressed have difficulties with sleeping. However, this is a predictor of it. This is before they're suffering from depression. So sleep helps with mood a lot and we found there's a lot more satisfaction that people have that are feeling well rested than when they're not your immune system becomes suppressed okay so you're more susceptible to bacteria and viruses and uh, things like that your fat cells you get increased production of them and you have a greater risk of obesity in fact it's fairly closely related to obesity and also because something that your stomach does we'll look over here um, your stomach be when you have lack of sleep it increases ghrelin which is a hormone that tells your brain I'm hungry you need to eat and it suppresses leptin which is another hormone that tells your brain that you are full you don't need to eat Okay, your heart, you have increased risk of high blood pressure. Your muscles, you have reduced strength, slower reaction time, and motor learning. So for athletes, it's really important to get your rest, uh, for anybody, even but, but athletes especially. And your joints, you can get increased inflammation and arthritis. If you're wondering if you're suffering from sleep loss, you know, see how many of these questions you can answer true to or false to and you'll see if you answer true to three or more chances are you're not getting enough sleep so go ahead and pause that and see how you would answer this so some major sleep disorders we have insomnia insomnia is where uh, people have difficulty sleeping in fact about half the people over the course of a year have, have indicated periods of having difficulty sleeping and if you it's very frustrating and, and it causes all those problems with sleep deprivation. Narcolepsy is the opposite where people will go through periods of just intense feeling of feelings of tiredness um, and in extreme cases may even fall asleep for brief periods of time um, just kind of out of the blue. Uh, the falling asleep is not the danger of narcolepsy. Of course the danger of narcolepsy is safety concerns. Uh, for example if you're driving and you become drowsy you know, in one of these episodes, which usually lasts about 15 minutes, or you fall asleep at the wheel, I mean, that's dangerous. And there's many other situations where it makes functioning in life very difficult. Sleep apnea is where people stop breathing when they fall asleep. So uh, it may be because their throat closes or because their diaphragm stops working. Uh, so people with sleep apnea don't even know it because, or hard, have trouble finding it out because usually they find out that they're just really tired all the time or someone else will notice that when they fall asleep that they stop breathing. And so the, the, the person with apnea will fall asleep, stop breathing, it wakes them up. Then they fall asleep, stops breathing, it wakes them up. They fall asleep, stop breathing, wakes them up. And this can happen, you know, four or five hundred times a night or more. And But the person with the sleep apnea believes they've slept soundly all night. 
because they, if you remember, there's like that three to five minute window before you fall asleep where you don't encode anything into your memory. So they think they've just slept all night long. Night terrors, intense feelings of dread. These people wake up, you know, like just, it's very common in two, three year olds, uh, smaller children, and it, they're inconsolable. You know, can last a, a fairly extended amount of time, like an hour or whatever, where they're inconsolable. Uh, yet, very rarely will they remember what the night terror was actually about. Uh, sleepwalking and sleep talking. Uh, night terrors are not uh, nightmares, by the way, which are more of a REM sleep activity. These are deep sleep things. Sleepwalking and sleep talking are also um, REM sleep stage three um, phenomena. Okay, so it's not like they're actually, you know, acting out a dream or something. So when we look at dreams, what people dream, um, Freud looked at this first and he said, you know, dreams are a great way for your unconscious to express itself in a safe way. But he said even in that case, though, that your dreams, when they come out, are edited and um, censored. So you will dream something, but it actually means something else. So when we look at the actual content of your dream, like I dreamt this happened and this happened, the actual content, that is called the manifest content. The latent content, though, according to Freud, is, is the actual meaning of that. So often these would be symbols or whatever in your manifest content that mean other things, often sexual or aggressive in nature. And... Um, this is where, you know, you've probably seen dream dictionaries where they have certain symbols that will indicate some, you know, meaning. However, they're really not based on scientific evidence. And uh, usually when we use dream interpretation, it's left more up to the client that's, that has the dream to interpret their dreams rather than saying, you know, a, a sun symbolizes this or a horse symbolizes that. So you can't put much stock in them, even though they're very interesting. Dreams are interesting things because it's like an alternate reality. So why do we dream? You know, we satisfy our own wishes, file away memories, develop neural pathways, make sense of neural static, reflect cognitive development. There's lots of theories and we'll kind of have a look at some of the, the big ones right now. Um, but it does seem dreaming might be important to us as human beings. There's the REM rebound. You know, we're talking about those people that average 12 nights of sleep, 12 hours of sleep when we gave them the opportunity. Um, and they were, it's like they're paying off a sleep debt. It's like your body keeps track of how much REM sleep you're missing. And then when you go back to sleep, um, if you're deprived of that, you will go into REM sleep faster. You will stay in it longer and you will stay asleep longer. And it's like trying to pay that that debt off through REM sleep. And this is known as REM rebound. But with our uh, our REM sleep, it, it decreases as we get older and our waking hours stay, you know, we, we stay awake longer. And it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, people when they're 90 don't need more sleep than this, uh, but their sleep patterns make it difficult. However, when you're a baby, you need lots of REM sleep, so they stay asleep for 16 hours. This is, you know, probably due to growth and consolidation of neural um, connections in their brain. So here are our dream theories. We've got dreams, you know, with Freud's wish fulfillment, which is what I was talking about in the other slide. Um, it does lack scientific support. Dreams can be interpreted in many different ways. There's information processing. It helps us sort out the events of the day. So it helps straighten them out, incorporate them in our mind. However, why do we dream about things that we haven't experienced, though? So it doesn't make sense with that theory. Physiological function, you know, maybe, you know, we're going through these long periods of deep delta waves in our brain that the REM sleep and dreaming is a way to stimulate your brain um, to help you develop and preserve the neural pathways. But it doesn't explain why there is meaningful dreams. Neural activation, this would be, you know, like a just random firings of your neurons happen and it'd be like no different than if we probed your brain and creating an hallucination. So it creates an hallucination. Also, this is, you know, stimulates a lot of dreams associated with the limbic system, which adds emotion to it. And then all of a sudden you have a dream made out of this. Um, the cognitive development, it also deflects the your cognitive development based on the idea that, you know, that children will dream more in a slide-like fashion than a movie-like fashion. However, it doesn't address the neuroscience of dreams. So we're going to leave it there. Uh, the psychoactive drugs we're going to cover in class, uh, so there won't be a video about that. Okay, so we'll see you guys in class. Bye for now.